Radio Raheem here with Kenny Porter. You see the Manhattan skyline behind us. Big fights coming. Your son is in a war. You guys have signed to fight Danny Garcia in Brooklyn at the Barclay September 8th. Uh, Sean Porter is no stranger to big fights. Yes. Uh, but it feels like Maybe short of the Broner fight, this might be one of the most personal type of buildups we've already experienced. Uh, he talked to me about that, your son's mentality going into this. You know what? I am surprised that he does have like, for, I don't know why, I, I asked him the other day, I'm like, you got a problem with Danny? You don't like him or something? He's like, somebody just rubbed me the wrong way. But, you know, war is what we, we, we are ready. W-A-R. We are ready. So we're ready for that. We're ready for that war. The kid says, you know, he want to sit there and fight in the middle of the ring and I'm like, oh yeah, let's do that. But then we gon' you gonna have to beat us in the corner. You're gonna have to beat us on the ropes. You're gonna have to beat us inside, outside, laterally. You're gonna have to beat us with a jab. It ain't gonna just be close your eyes and throw the hook. That ain't gonna work. You're gonna need a whole lot more than that. If you're able to close your eyes, throw the hook, and land it on him, he's the type of fighter that you're gonna have to come back with more than that. Cause it's not gonna be one punch that's gonna finish him off. It ain't happening. One thing Danny said from the podium, and uh, even in my interview just now, he reiterated it with more detail. He feels like Sean fights the same fight every fight, no matter who he's fighting. Yeah. So he knows what to expect, and he can't make adjustments is, the, is his criticism. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, we fight fight specific. So whoever we're fighting, we do specific things to beat that person. And it just so happens that a lot of the people that we fought, the, the, the way we were fighting and different things that we were doing with them made that work for us. But if you go back and you take a look at a fight like Adrian Broner, we didn't fight Adrian Broner the way that we fought Keith Thurman. We used a lot of jabs to get Adrian Broner and we out jabbed Adrian Broner. You know what I mean? And so much so holding Sean back that entire fight, which I, you know, I was in the corner literally holding him back. I guess he got really relaxed in that last round feeling, oh, this guy ain't going to do nothing. And, and then he got hit with a shot that he literally saw the punch come. And instead of him throwing his hand up or ducking the punch, he literally looked at it and said, oh, shit, I'm about to get hit. Which was, you know, something that obviously, you know, you should never lose your focus. But he did that. Uh, if you take a look at the Adrian Granados fight, we... Uh, had a fight there where Sean was moving laterally and boxing all night long. That's going to be a problem for Danny. So if he thinks that, you know, if he wants to say we fight the same way or if he thinks that he can put that out there for us, that we'll come in there. Um, we will come in there. We will do a lot of things like that, but we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to fight him like we fought Adrian or we're not going to fight him like we fought Keith. He's going to have a lot of things to deal with that night. Now, as often happens with elite fighters, they end up fighting each other and you end up with a situation where two guys who are facing each other now have both faced the same opponent recently. Obviously, I'm talking about Keith Thurman. Neither fighter was able to get the result they wanted, especially, it's certainly not on the cards. So as a trainer, what do you take away from both fights respectively that help you in this upcoming fight? Uh, in comparison to, to Danny, you know, I just think Keith is you know, bigger, stronger, faster guy. Um, that remains to be seen if, if Danny can pull that off and, and show us that he's bigger and stronger, faster. But uh, we're going to try to raise the level up higher than what we did. I'm pushing Sean to raise it higher than what he did against Keith, and I just don't think that Danny will be able to handle that. You talk about having to hold your fighter back in the corner and you just say, like, physically hold him back sometimes. Yeah, I had to physically hold him back in the Broner fight. So, we know that boxing, as all fighters have told me, is 80% mental, some say 90. Uh, if a guy goes in angry or passionate about hurting the opponent instead of sticking to the game plan, that can hurt him as a fighter. How do you harness the focus of, on the game plan, but also maintain the explosiveness of Sean Porter? Literally, sometimes with Sean, I'm damn near like, you know, like literally almost have to slap him or something like you know to try to get him not to be overly aggressive in some of the situations and like you know i'll take the andre berto fight for example um there was a point he had berto on the ropes and he's going to his body and he's hitting him with so many body shots it had got to a point where as you talk about the mental part it had got to a part where you're throwing too many body punches right here but he was in such physical shape excellent condition when he came back and sat down I'm like oh you're fine 
But as I was looking at it, I'm like, that's too many body punches. You're just throwing too many punches right there because I don't know how many he threw. I don't know, but it was ridiculous how many times he hit him to the body right there. And I was thinking that he was his energy level was going to be shot. But the kid comes back and he's like, okay, let's go. So in that situation right there, I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. If, if, if you hit a guy with 10, 15, he must have hit that guy with 20 body shots. And he doesn't go down right there. You're expending too much energy. And that's the mental part that we got to watch out for, that he doesn't overdo some things and try to force something. Sean talked about his frustration of not getting the fights he wanted when he wanted them. And he even talked about maybe using different tactics, promotionally, if you will, to, to bring these fights about. He feels like this is part of why we're even here today. But just a couple of days ago, we had Mikey Garcia, a 135-pound fighter, win his fight and call out the champion in this division, the, the guy that everybody wants to be, Errol Spence. And it appeared that Errol Spence basically took the fight on the spot. They even got a month in, in mind in December. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Danny Garcia entering the division at 47 after coming, just skipping 40, first of all, and then jumping right to the, to the main guy and getting a shot? He skipped 40? I thought well, he was the 40-pound champion. But not in, this, in his return, He's, fight, he's not fighting 40 now. So, I mean, he took two years off. Now he's, he's returned. And essentially, he's going from, his last fight was 35. Now he's going straight to 47. Oh, okay. See, you said Danny Garcia. Oh, did mean, I say Danny? Yeah, I meant Mikey. Of yeah, course yeah, I meant Mikey. Mikey. It threw me off. Okay. So how do I feel about that? Okay. So I feel that it's a great fight for the fans. It's a great fight for Errol Spence. Errol's one of my guys, so I want to see Errol be successful. So if he gets that opportunity, I'm saying Errol, take it. If he was to ask me, Coach, what do you think? I'm like, Errol, take that twice on Sunday. Um, I, I, I respect and can appreciate Garcia's ambition. But it's like you're poking a bear. You really are. You're poking a bear, and you, he's sleeping, and you really think he's not going to jump up and tear you to pieces because Arrow's going to, you know, really, he's going to really bring some heat on fight night. So, um, you know, that, that, you know, that remains to be seen how, uh, how this kid is able to come up in weight, how he's able to hold the weight on fight night. And then, see, here's another part, and I don't know if they're really looking at this. Errol is bigger than 147 on fight night. He's a lot bigger than 147. He's bigger than 54. He's bigger than 160 on fight night. So you got a big man on fight night. So, you know, that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot to take on. So he's poking a bear. And lastly, uh, a new uh, contender, now champion in the division, as we know, uh, is Crawford. Yeah. Crawford has made a statement. He's just come up from 140, and his name has to be on everybody's mind. Right. Who do you think would be best for Sean? Not looking past Danny in any yeah, regard. Him, yeah. Obviously, that's the fight right. that he's got to win first. But knowing that this career has to be guided, who do you think was the better matchup for him if he is successful against Danny Garcia? And when you're saying better matchup, are we talking about who he's got a better shot at beating, or are we talking about better who's going to bring the, who's going to bring the most money, who's going to bring the cachet, who's going to bring the name? Because that's a business part of what we have to deal with here. And I know that's what Garcia, uh, um, is the Garcia from from California, Mikey. I know that's what he's looking at. He's got to be looking at Arrow for the name, because and, and because you know. Um, Sean would be a hard fight for him. Uh, Errol, I mean, uh, 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 Crawford. Bud Crawford would be hard for him. Pacquiao would be hard for him. Uh, the Thurman would be very hard for him. He's looking at Errol for the name. He's got to be looking at that name. So for us, if we're looking at the matchup being the fight, thank you. Thank you. The matchup being the fight that 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 we match up well with. Um, I'm gonna say. Uh, all of those guys are tough. All of those guys are hard. Um, shit. <laughs> uh, we can rematch Danny. <laughs> we can rematch Danny. You know? But Danny, Arrow, Keith, Bud, those are the guys we want to fight. And then I want Sean to walk away from this sport. I want him to fight those guys point blank and simple. I know they've heard the, the interviews. That's what I want these guys to do. They need to fight each other to become great. I don't expect them to be in 
uh, compared to Hagler, Hearns, Leonard, and Duran. What I do expect them to do is fight each other and be in the same conversation and say, at a later time, at a different era, these guys were the top guys and they fought each other and be in that same conversation. Not that there are, you know, Duran or their Leonard or their Hagler or their Hearns, but for their era, they want to, I want them to fight each other. Of all the names you just mentioned, in the division that we're talking about, I think this is the most dangerous, impacted, talent-wise division in the sport right now. So all of those guys are, you know, some of them, you know, their belts are out there, but they're still clamoring for supremacy. Nobody has just hands down, okay, he's, he's 47 king since Mayweather, right? Right. How, how does Sean separate himself from the pack? What makes Sean special or different from all these guys that can get him there? Danny. And then after after beating Danny, and you know, obviously Errol Spence is talking about taking that fight with with with, with Garcia, and you know, that's his business. That's a great decision for him if he goes that route. But he's got to beat Danny, and then after Danny, he's got to take on those other top guys that we talked about. You know, the Bud Crawfords. But what is it about his ability? I'm talking about not 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 his his path, but what he brings to the ring that separates him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, off the top of my head, I'm gonna say, you know, his aggressive tenacity, his conditioning, his nonstop, um, you know, his will, his will is very strong. Um, his coach, no, really, no, really, because I know that none of these guys are gonna, they, they, they can't outcoach me. That shit ain't happening. They're not gonna outcoach me. I refuse to let that happen. Not an angel. Not a uh, you know Keith's guy or Arrow's guy or or, or 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 Crawford's guy. I'm not gonna let you know. The, all of the fighters are great fighters. There's got to be some things that separate them. And you know, having this conversation with you, I'm gonna have that conversation with Sean. Hey, Sean, we got to separate ourselves. We're gonna have to do more than we've done ever before to separate ourselves from these guys. Well, on September 8th, you have your opportunity to separate yourself from one of these guys. I can't wait to see all those attributes in the ring. Sean Porter versus Danny Garcia at the Barclay in Brooklyn, September 8th, here with Kenny Porter in the corner. Radio Raheem with Kenny Porter right here in Manhattan.